All right, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about the five basic tastes. So what we're gonna do in this video is first look at the tongue map, which is uh, something that's been circulating online and in some textbooks. We're gonna address that. We're gonna look at the individually five basic tastes. We'll talk about what they are. We'll talk about the chemicals that are active properties for that taste. And then we'll talk about um, uh, the sixth and seventh basic tastes, which may be coming up in the next couple of years. Um, okay, so first of all, the tongue map. Um, sometimes you'll see this on Pinterest, you'll see this on Facebook. People will talk about this stuff. You'll even see it in some culinary schools. Uh, this kind of figure over here where you have a, a tongue and then you have different spots of the tongue which are mostly sensitive to certain basic tastes. A spot on your tongue for bitter, a spot on your tongue uh, for salty. That's actually not true. This, uh, this diagram was kind of a, a mistake that was kind of a, um, uh, an accident or a mistranslation from like 1901 and has since been kind of repeated and reprinted. It's not true. It's not actually how it works. It's been tested time and again to show that this isn't actually how it works. And yet, because it's kind of interesting, I guess it still persists. So it's kind of the, the world's uh, most boring urban legend. Okay, so let's look at the five basic tastes now. Now that we have that out of the way, these five basic tastes are gonna take place all over the tongue. They're not confined to one specific area of the tongue. So they're, they're all over the place. Um, and before we get into it, the way that we're gonna follow this format is that first I'm gonna tell you what the taste is and then I'm gonna tell you uh, what the chemical of it is that we are most sensitive to that defines that taste. And then I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of those tastes in everyday life that you may come across uh, in, in your own adventures. Okay, so in order for us to be able to identify these tastes, we have to have receptors that are sensitive to those kinds of chemicals. So in our taste bud, our taste buds, those little bumps on your tongue, are filled with these nerve fibers. And these nerve fibers are, are basically looking for certain kinds of, uh, certain kinds of chemicals. So for saltiness, so the first one of these that we're gonna be talking about is salty. Salty is uh, a sensitivity to sodium. So sodium, you know, is a mineral. Sodium is, is a rock. Uh, so you don't actually find it appearing all that much in natural foods, or uh, occurring in foods naturally. Usually people will add salt. You can find low amounts of it in meats, um, but usually we add salt, you know, to, to uh, the foods that we like. Uh, so that's saltiness. Uh, sweetness is going to be the second uh, basic taste. And sweetness is basically the, the, to the taste receptors that we have are sensitive to certain sugars. And this could be fructose, it can be sucrose or glucose, any kind of sugar like that. Uh, once uh, it, once that that chemical once that that uh, once that chemical binds to that receptor, it sends out action potentials to let you know that hey, you're tasting something that is sweet. Uh, so things that are naturally occurring that are sweet might be you know um, certain kind of fruits are sweet. Uh, uh, chocolates, well, that's sometimes adding sugar, which makes it sweet. Uh, and so. Uh, one of the interesting things about sweetness is that uh, Splenda or Sweet and Low, Sucralose, Aspartame, these different artificial sugars, one of the ways that they work and one of the ways that they feel to us like they are sweet is because they trick our tongue receptors into believing that they are sweet. They have a very similar kind of property to those sweet molecules, those actual sugar molecules, without actually being a sugar. That's what kind of trips our tongue into doing that. Okay, we gotta move on. Uh, sourness. Sourness is the detection of acidic chemicals. So, what uh, could possibly be acidic? Well, a lot of fruits are, uh, are acidic, especially citrus fruits. Uh, so, uh, any kind of acid is going to taste to us to be sour. So, like citric acid, for example, is very sour. Um, if you were to drink uh, carbonic acid, that would be sour. If you were to put hyd uh, hydrochloric acid on your tongue, that would be sour as well. So, uh, and this, you know, large amounts of acid can damage parts of your mouth, which is why if you eat a whole bag of sour Skittles, you'll find that, hey, your mouth feels kind of raw. Part of that is because of the grainy texture of the sour Skittles, but it's also because that acid will kind of damage some of the tissue over time. Uh, the fourth basic taste is gonna be bitter. And bitter is a little bit more complicated because the chemical agent that we are responding to with bitter is anything that might be potentially toxic. So 
what is bitter? Um, you know, if you think about caffeine, caffeine is very bitter. And caffeine in large amounts can be poisonous to us. Uh, caffeine in large amounts can cause heart, heart palpitations or anything like that. Uh, can uh, mess with your, your nervous system. Same thing goes with alcohol, beer, wine. Generally, they're very bitter. Now, I know that some white wines are very sweet, but that's besides the point. Most wines and beers and other alcohols are, uh, are, are bitter because they are toxic, they are poisonous to us. We are generally most sensitive to bitter items because bitter um, uh, could mean the difference of life and death. So if you're walking around in a forest and you come across some berries and you eat them and they're bitter, watch out because they're probably not very good for you. The fifth basic taste, and the fifth one, this was this kind of a new one, really kind of became canonized in the 70s and still in elementary schools, it's not always taught all that much. That fifth one is gonna be our sense of savoriness. Uh, or sometimes also called umami because in Japanese uh, or Japanese foods you see this a lot um, is uh, umami just means delicious or delicious food or, or yummy food or, or you know uh, different variations of that uh, savoriness is going to be kind of a meaty taste I usually describe it as kind of like a beefy broth brothy taste it is whenever we are uh, are responding to monosodium glutamate because we have glutamate receptors that are going to be specifically looking for these kinds of tastes so we have a taste receptor for all those four but also for this fifth one as well which makes it a basic taste uh, so if you haven't uh, tried it before you can try uh, some monosodium glutamate or also called MSG you hear a lot of people talking about MSG um, because there was a scare that people might be allergic to it. Turns out not very many people are allergic to it at all. It's just that one of the first people who actually studied this in America does seem to actually have been allergic to it and it just caused a panic thinking everybody was allergic to it, but they're not. You can find this at a grocery store. You can add it to your scrambled eggs and it's really, really good. It, it really brings out uh, that meat kind of uh, taste to your scrambled eggs or to your steak or whatever you're adding to it. It's gonna cause you to salivate. That's one of the things that you can do. So you can just pour it in a spoon and taste it and it's very savory. Okay, so those are the five basic tastes. There's a potential sixth basic taste and a potential seventh basic taste. The sixth one is gonna be fatty. And that's not official yet. We have discovered fat receptors or fat tasting receptors in mice and in rats. And so on the rat tongue, you can look and, and they have found fat taste receptors. So you, we know that, that you can be sensitive to eating fat foods. Now this is kind of tricky because a lot of fatty foods uh, are what people respond to most is the texture of it, right? That is kind of gelatinous or kind of tough. That's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about something a little bit different. We're talking about the basic taste of it. And if you want a, an explanation of taste versus flavor, there's another video that I have posted for that. Uh, so fat hasn't been officially found in humans yet, but I'm willing to bet that in the next couple of decades, we're gonna see this as the sixth basic taste. The seventh basic taste is spiciness. And spiciness is uh, much more complicated because when things are spicy, uh, what we are responding to is an, an agent called capsaicin. And this chemical uh, does have uh, some harmful properties to your taste buds and to your mouth. You know this because if you eat really spicy foods, it hurts. And it hurts because that capsaicin is very abrasive and is actually kind of damaging some of, uh, of, of uh, these receptors and some of these taste buds. Now, I don't mean to warn you against those things because obviously, you know, spicy foods are eaten all the time. But spicy foods are, are difficult because um, what we're responding to is capsaicin, um, but that's a little bit different than sodium, it's a little bit different than acid, it's a little bit different from potentially toxic things like with bitter. Um, it's different because what we're tasting may not actually be the taste, but rather the sensation of the pain that we get from spicy foods. And so some people in the, in the scientific community are very adamant that spiciness should be the next basic taste. And there are other people who say no, just because it's painful doesn't mean that it's a basic taste. So you have that argument going on there. Okay, so those are the five, sixth and seventh basic tastes. Um, thanks for tuning in.